Okay, so Kimpin just released a brand new revision of the famous T-Rex CPU container. The very same pot I've been using for a very long time already. I think it's great, it's good both for like full pot temperatures as well as for very tight like temperature control with some very hard cold bugging CPUs. So uh, the new revision is called revision 4 and it's this one over here. Price roughly the same, I think the uh, price is $375 if I'm not completely mistaken, but you can see the price and your whole specs at kimpingcooling.com. But yeah, so the newest or the latest revision is over here and the previous version over here. Main difference is in the weight and in uh, the internal design. The revision 4 has a bit more like fine-tuned internals for full pot operation. The weight of the revision 4 is 2.4 kilograms. The previous version weighs 2.8, so there's a weight reduction of 400 grams, but uh, the internal design over here is a lot more geared towards full pot operation as well as for fast pull down speed. I think that this one over here, so the latest revision is very, it should be, well, it should be at least better than the previous one for something like 11900K when you run the newest CPUs at full pot temperatures in very like heavy multi-threaded workloads. The previous might be actually better with some very large CPUs that need very strict temperature control like some of the X299 CPUs or the 28 core Xeon or any other very large multi-core CPU that has a very strict cold bug temperature. But uh, I'll try to show you the internal like design and differences. So uh, the center hole on this new revision goes a lot deeper and there's some like machinery spots over here that connect if you see the center hole is connected to the outer holes at the center to these small like outer holes at the center that's one of the main differences so uh, if you look at the previous version you can see the center hole is a lot it's 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 uh, nowhere near as deep and there's no connection whatsoever with the smaller like outer, outer holes over here at the center. So the uh, deep hole at the center should go very close to the base of the container, which should help with the full pot temperatures. And also the, some of these, like uh, most outer holes over here, like uh, in that row and in that row, although it's not easy to show due to the light, but they are now connected with the rest of the design at the center. So you can see they actually make like an entrance over there to the center part of the pot and there's no such connection over here on the, on the previous version. The holes are also a little bit smaller on the previous version than compared over here but those are the main differences. So 400 grams less for better pull down speed and better maximum cooling performance at the maximum temperature of liquid nitrogen. So uh, let's check this pot out. I'll actually do the same preparation process with this container as I've already shown you before. There aren't that many like uh, CPU pot options nowadays on the market. People mostly use the uh, these pots from Kimpin, some uh, designs by Pascal, uh, I think his uh, like title is Burning OC, he's based in Germany, but he only makes like small batches of containers as far as I know. I haven't tried any of his containers and uh, I think EK still has some of the SF3D pots and so on, but really the uh, extreme cooling gear market is quite, a, is quite small nowadays. I use T-Rex pretty much for everything. For the very old platforms like 775 CPUs and so on, I still prefer the F1 Dark, the legendary F1 Dark by Kimping Cooling. But even when you move on to, let's say, something like uh, 1366 or X58, even with those CPUs, I already think that the T-Rex is better because uh, 1366 CPUs are already a bit larger than 775 and for example with some Golf Town CPUs like 980X, 990X, you can actually reach full pot temperatures if you have a lucky CPU and you know how to control it. So uh, and at full pot temperatures the T-Rex is definitely better than the F1 Dark. Let's prepare this pot so this is pretty much the outcome we are looking for. So we want some basic insulation around the container. Be aware that as this CPU container is already so huge you cannot use 
too large insulation. So even with one layer of three millimeters thick closed cell form insulation tape, these parts that are usually next to the rods, you may have to remove some of the insulation material. So just be aware. So we want to add our temperature measurement probe. I really like to use the Kimping cooling binned ones for the main containers like CPU container, GPU container for the very small pots like uh, like a North Bridge pot, although I have never used one. Memory, memory pot, or even if you measure the temperature directly from the memory heat sinks, for those you want the more basic, like uh, K-type thermocouple probes. And even, even those normal ones can be very good, but you generally have to bin a lot of them yourself if you want to find a very good one that can read the LN2 temperatures correctly, like uh, as close as minus 196 uh, as possible, depending on your altitude. So if, if you are directly at the sea level, you should measure minus 195.8. And as, as you go higher in terms of altitude, the temperature should go a bit cooler. So uh, you will have the easiest time if you just purchase one or, one or two of these Kimpin ones. So for the actual preparation, we will use electrical tape as our first layer, because the hard part about these uh, like Armaflex or any closed cell form insulation tapes is that if you apply them once, if you attach them even once on the surface, it's a really painful process to get it removed. It usually tears into pieces and it's very hard because it's, a, it's very like sticky stuff. So that's why I will attach the probe first and I will cover the entire outer surface with the electrical tape and then I will add the uh, Armaflex, which I have over here. Armaflex insulation tape, this is three millimeters thick, around the pot. So if I have to remove the insulation at some point in the future, it's a very simple process to do, just rip off the electrical tape and it's all gone. No annoying residues or remnants left on top of the CPU pot's surface. So let's do that. You need some high performance thermal paste to go between or go around the probe as you push it inside the base of the pot and also when it comes to like temperature measurements like if you compare containers at full pot temperatures it really depends a lot where the measurement is taken like is it is the probe pushed very deep inside the uh, in the base of the pot or is it just attached at the very near because if the measurement is very far from the center of the base the temperatures always look a lot better than if the measurement was taken directly from between the uh, like the CPU's IHS spot and the center of the container. I would not, I wouldn't myself attach the probe too deep. You don't want the probe to sit between the heat source and the cooler. So that could actually cause some uh, minor like disadvantage in the cooling performance if there's a probe, at least some part of the probe between the heat source and the pot because it doesn't matter. Even if the uh, probe is attached at the near of the edge, once the LN2 pot has been filled completely with LN2, the temperature is as best as it can be. You cannot make it any better by changing the location of the probe. I'm sure you get the idea. The only, the only part of this is to tell us that at which temperature level we are going and so on. But so let's get forward. I'll, uh, I might do the actual like steps of camera and I'll just show you the different parts of the outcome. Like when the probes, probe is attached, when the electrical tape has been applied or attached around the pot, then the insulation and it's all done. Okay, so the first step we'll do is we will clean the head of the probe itself as this has been used. This is taken from my one of my old Tech9 pots. I think it was the FAT 6.0, but, but it doesn't matter. So uh, if you recycle the probe from some old container, just clean off the old thermal paste. I think I used some GSC Extreme or similar for this pot over here. So what we will do next is I will uh, I'll put like two pieces of electrical tape ready. So when I apply or when I attach the probe, I can easily just stick it in place quickly with the uh, electrical tape I've already cut for the purpose. So that can be right there. So first one. And then we will take some uh, high performance thermal paste. It can be Kimpin Cooling KPX or whatever you wish to use, but this is what I like to use. So I will apply some KPX at the 
at the place of the hole over there and then also on top of this probe over here so that we have plenty when we stick or when we push the probe inside the hole. It doesn't matter if you apply quite a lot of it because there is some air gaps inside the hole and you want something to fill the air gaps between the uh, end of the probe and the uh, surface of the CPU container. So I think this should be all right. So just you need sometimes you need to use quite a bit of force with these skimping cooling probes. So we find the spot over there. Yeah, you need to push it quite firmly in like so. And then just make sure when you bend the uh, probe that you don't accidentally uh, like uh, pull it out from the hole. And now what we'll do, we will attach the first attach the first electric piece of electrical tape like so. Just make sure you get it quite tight. That's the first one. The second one, just make sure you don't accidentally pull the probe out because that can actually happen. Because these kimping cooling probes, they are technically quite annoying because they actually, so the material or the probe isn't as easy to bend as those basic or normal like K-type probes. What I'll do is that I will just cover the surface of the, pro, of the pod itself with this electrical tape and then we will apply the insulation. I think I can do this part of camera. And okay, so the, now the whole pot has been covered, so you can see even coverage in, el in electrical tape. So if we have to remove the insulation at some point in the future, it's very easy. It, very, it's a very easy thing to do. Of course, you don't have to do this, but if you don't apply anything between the insulation and the pot surface, well, you will see what happens when you try. If you try to remove the insulation at some point in the future, so now what we'll do. You want to like measure the length of the first piece so that you get an even piece of this insulation uh, tape. So just pull it over the uh, pot like so, mark it with your finger and just cut it. So let's do this, but it's a bit hard to do on camera. But as you can probably see, these probes are sometimes very annoying because they really like, it feels they just want to come off from the whole pot and even peel off the whole insulation with them. Let's apply this like so. And turn the container like this. Just keep it pulled so that it goes on the surface quite tight. Then this side, like so. It should be quite an even piece. There's some extra over there, but you can obviously just cut it like that. But that's, that's pretty much the basic way you apply this insulation tape. And now we just have to take similar, like a similar length piece and just cut it in, uh, cut like 60% of the width of the tape and apply one more piece over here. You don't want to extend the insulation apart from like this point over here. So from this edge or corner. And these, as I already said, these are generally the points where the rods go, like over here and over here. So you want to take some part of the insulation off from these spots so that the uh, insulation like doesn't block or prevent a good contact on the target CPU. Like it could suddenly get snuck between the rods and it it's very hard to make like a very good contact on the CPU. So I'll just take so I'll just take one more piece like so. And we got some extra again. But doesn't matter. So let's cut it off. And that's pretty much how you insulate the pot. What do you think? I think it looks pretty neat. So definitely a great one. Just two you can try to mount this, of course, but generally, generally speaking, this will touch the rods over here. So what we can do already at this point. Okay, so just quickly to show you guys. So I used, some, I used a surgeon's knife to peel off some of the insulation from uh, these, like, these edges of the uh, longest side. So over here and over here. So uh, when you install this, like, uh, well, doesn't matter. It can be a mainstream CPU or the 28 core. 
you will see that the rods will go very close to the pot's surface on these parts of the container. And if you have too thick insulation, the pot will not fit inside the rods. So that's what I mean. But I really want to use, I really want to use some kind of insulation on the pot and not just like paper towel around the uh, pot once, that it's, once it has been installed with the rods. I think this works just fine, but uh, this is just my way of doing things. So uh, if you think this is good, then you can just follow these steps. So now what we'll do is we will set up an EVGA Z590 system with 11 nanar KF or K. I'll have both, I'll see which I'll use. And let's see the uh, pull down temperature, like uh, briefly how, well, how fast does it pull down and what's the temperature difference at full pot temperatures, like uh, idle versus load in something like R15 or R20. So uh, without further ado, let's get the test rig set up and ready to go and let's see how well this pot can actually perform. Okay, so uh, let's try the pull down speed of the container, like roughly. We don't of course have to follow until the end, but just like rough idea. So uh, that's Fluke 52.2 thermometer over there and Pot is set up there on top of the 11900K and ready to go. So let's just see, like roughly. Yeah, it's pretty quick, but I think the uh, probe spot is a bit different this time. So it's not too deep inside the uh, base of the container. But yeah, I think that's pretty quick. At least it's fast enough for me. And definitely faster than the previous design. Yeah. Okay, so uh, just to show you the low temperatures, my CPUs aren't the best, but uh, this 1100K can actually pass uh, 6.4 at least in R20 and 6.5 is actually quite close. So when I show you the low temperatures, so uh, 6.5, in Cinebench R20, 1.79 volts set. At idle, once 193.4.5. So uh, let's fire this up and let's see. One ninety point five. Nine point three, okay, a one twenty five. 